What's up everybody, Thomas Brandon here, and welcome to another video, and in today's video we got something really, really important that we're going to be covering. Now, this is actually a new video series, playlist, I don't know what you really want to call it, but it's new that I'm going to be doing pretty much every Friday. So, keeping in with the racing theme, we're going to call it Fast Friday, and what I'm going to be doing is, is I'm going to be basically explaining or breaking down covering a topic within five minutes or less now just to keep things kind of fun and interesting i'll throw a timer up to make sure that i can actually do it in five minutes or less and keep in mind this will be five minutes from when i actually start the topic not the introduction like this yeah man, I, I i probably won't be able to do it in five minutes or less but you never know we'll see yeah i who knows but we'll give it a shot it'll be fun either way we're going to cover some really interesting stuff especially today's topic which is one of the most important yet most misunderstood topics when it comes to the nascar truck setups so what we're going to be covering is spring deflection why it's important what it is and most importantly how to actually use it so stick around All right, everybody. So like I was saying, we're going to be diving into spring deflection and specifically on the left front corner of the truck. Now, really quick, spring deflection is just a fancy way of saying compression, right? So if you look at a compression spring, the deflection is how much of that spring has, has it compressed? And you have in the garage, you have a static number and you have a maximum number. Now, what this is telling you is that it is saying, hey, out of six inches possible, it's already compressed five inches. And what that means is that you have one more inch of compression before the spring coil binds or essentially before it's fully compressed and it cannot compress anymore. So why is this important? Well, this is important because your springs, especially on the front of the truck, are nothing more than a ride height controller. That's really what their job is. So the goal of the left front spring, at least for me, how I use it, is it is to control the ride height of my front end, specifically the left front corner, and I use the spring deflection to determine how much more or less I have and how to actually improve the ride height. Now, essentially what the goal is, you want the left front spring to coil bind, and when it coil binds, you want that splitter to be as close to the ground as possible without it actually touching, right? Without it bottoming out. So let's head over to the garage real quick, and I'll show you a couple of examples of this. All right, so we're at California. We've got the iRacing setup on here. And this right here is what we are talking about. So right now on this setup, iRacing has a 340 pound left front spring and our deflection is 4.34 of 5.98. So what that means is, is that the spring has compressed 4.34 inches out of a maximum of 5.98 inches. So essentially what we have is we have 1.6 four inches my, my math's a little rough right now 1.64 inches of compression left okay so that's what we have now the goal of this is to get that left front spring like i said to completely compress to be coil bound and then when it is have the splitter be right above the ground because when that happens what that's going to do is is that's going to minimize your drag it's going to maximize your downforce which in turn increases your handling and increases your speed so we want that splitter to be as close to the ground as possible we always talk about getting the, you know it's sealed off and that's the way that you're going to do it now what a lot of people get confused about is the spring rate and then the truck bottoming out and this is where people get really mixed up because they'll say, Tommy, why is it that I put on a heavier left front spring and then I start bottoming out? Well, let's actually take a look at that. If we go from a 340 to let's say a 400, all right, and we reset the ride height because that's key. You always reset your ride heights. Okay, and we get back to what were we at? Four, we were at 4.77, but let's go 4.94, that's, that's close, okay? And you can see it, with one click, it's only changing it, you know, one, a hundredth of an inch all right so it's not it's not a massive difference but 
if we go to 4.794, all right, our deflection now is 3.7 out of 5.87. So now we have 2.17 inches. The amount of deflection that we have left is much more than when it was a 340 pound spring. So now we have another full inch that that spring can compress before it's coil bound. So what that means is, is that splitter can now move down farther because the spring has more to move down. And this is why people will start bottoming out when they put a stiffer spring on the left front and they don't understand deflection. If you have more potential spring travel, what that does is that opens you up to having the splitter hit the ground before that spring coil binds, which will hold it in place. Now keep in mind, there is a obvious a trade-off with this. If I go putting a 2,000 pound left front spring in here, the, 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 sh the spring is going to be so stiff that there's not gonna be enough force, no matter how much travel you have, to get it to bottom out. But it is a trade-off, and that's the thing that I want you to realize, is that when you are running these softer springs, and pretty much that's what we run on these trucks, you know, we run, you know, I, I never go above, you know, a 400. Um, at least I don't as of right now. I don't go above 400. And I never change my right front spring. I mean, I might maybe put a 310 in there, but I, I don't mess with the right front. I literally only change the left front as of right now. And when you have even a 400 pound spring compared to a 300 pound spring, the amount of force that's being applied to that left front at a track like California, for example, where you're at high speeds because of downforce, you are getting a ton of downforce on the front of that car, which is allowing that to compress even more. And what's happening for a lot of people is that you are hitting the ground with the splitter before that spring is coil binding, which is why it is so important for you to understand your spring deflection and how to use it. All right, you guys, so that's going to do it all for the spring deflection. I don't know if I did, did I do that in less than five. I don't know, but I, I guess we'll find out, huh? Um, but that's going to do it all for spring deflection. I hope that made sense. I hope that was a good explanation for you. Um, if it was, please let me know down in the comments below. So that way I know uh, that you understood it and I did a decent job of explaining it. Now in that little talk, I mentioned telemetry and one of the things that I am going to be doing, um, because I have had so many people um, reach out to me over the last week. I've had almost, no exaggeration, almost 30 people have messaged me, emailed me, um, you know, direct message me in, in Discord um, asking for help with telemetry, specifically wanting, you know, workbooks or maths or something like that. Now, as I've told you guys before, I you know that my MoTeX stuff is it's unavailable. I, you know, it's the one thing that I don't really share. Yes, I've done a MoTeX masterclass. Um, you know, I have made workbooks available before in very special situations like the Road to Pro stuff that we've done, the trainings and stuff like that. But because I've had so many people asking about it, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to actually make these workbooks available. But here's the thing. They are going to be for sale. Um, I just, I, you know, I don't, I, I've put literally hundreds and hundreds of hours into them. And so they're going to be for sale, but here's the thing. It's not available right now. It'll be this next week, but it'll be available for, you know, like less than a hundred dollars. And it'll come with the training video that kind of breaks down the different channels and how to use it. And then you'll have it and it's, it's yours. You know what I mean? Like it's, 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 it's yours. So, um, because I've had so many people asking me for that, I'm going to do that. Um, only the asphalt stuff will be available, not the dirt stuff. Only the asphalt stuff will be available. Um, and it'll be, you know, Xfinity next gen, uh, NASCAR truck, um, you know, a super late model. Those will be the ones available. If that is something that interests you, make sure that you are signed up on the website because I will be sending out an email to everybody when those are available. Um, so just keep an eye out for that this next week. But that'll do it, you guys. Thank you very much, as always, for joining me. Now, please do me a favor. If you like this video, if it helped you, if it was informative, please hit that like button. You know all the YouTube stuff to do. Share it, all the other stuff. Comment down below. Also, 
if you want to actually join the School of Sim Racing website, get the free trainings that we've got. We've got the Asphalt Masterclass um, that is completely free and available. And I go through a bunch of stuff on not only how to drive, you know, like the basic skills to driving the different asphalt oval cars. I actually cover the setups and how, you know, the process for building the setups. We're on the A-Class car right now. We're on the next-gen cup car. That video will be going up um probably this next week um uh, and the setup video we are i already did that here on youtube i'll just be using that one but the, the the driving one will be going up this next week and then it's complete you've got from all the way from the late model stock all the way up to the next gen car and everything in between plus we've got you know free paints uh yeah, suits you know setup guides like a bunch of free stuff so if you want to check any of that stuff out like i said it's all completely free you just got to go sign up on the website so you can get access to the free membership because that's going to be your your emails your login so um if you want to do and check any of that stuff out you know head over and do that also when you join the when you hit the button that says join community it'll give you the link to the ssr discord along with the ssr facebook group and you'll get to you know come into what i think is the the best sim racing community online today i mean we literally have thousands of people in there and it's not just like it's not just a it's not just a a, a number like they're they're active members of the community that help one another like it's just a great place to be um i answer a lot of questions in there a lot i mean some of the best sim racers in there help people constantly everybody's in there willing to help so if you want to check any of that stuff out i'll have links for all that down in the description below but that's going to do it thank you guys very much as always for joining me and until next time i want to wish you good luck good racing take care